Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Technically Something, the show where we talk about technology, creativity, tutorials, and gaming. As always, I'm your host Kevin Allen and something kind of sad has been happening lately. These pictures of cities with empty streets. Ironically enough, um, I've had an assignment where we do just that in Photoshop, where we can take a city street that's mostly empty, but it was so hard to find a picture with nobody on the streets. Um, but we would make that city look as if it was abandoned or no one had been in it for thousands of years and it was overgrown and forgotten. Uh, yeah, we have plenty of pictures of empty city streets, and it's actually much easier to make a city look abandoned. And I had received some requests to make a step-by-step -step video on how to do that. Who am I to say no? We're gonna find a bunch of images and combine them together, transform them, warp them, mask them, adjust them, and blend them together until we have a city that looks like it has been abandoned for thousands of years. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's coming right up in just one sec. Step 1. Find Images Of course, we're going to have to find images to work with. First, you're going to start by finding a city, then some grass, and also cracks. And one thing to note about all of these images is that they need to be anywhere between 15 to 2,000 pixels minimum. And you can see this by looking at the dimensions in the lower left-hand corner. You'll also need to find a picture of rust, some overgrown moss or leaves, some tree trunks or vines, and treetops. Number two, organize your images. Now, you're going to take the city image, right click and select copy image, then go to Photoshop and create a new file. You can also hit Control N to do this as well. When the new options pop up, make sure that you select clipboard because this will have the dimensions of the image that we just copied. Change the resolution to 300 and keep the color mode at RGB. Then click Create. Now we're on a brand new file. To paste the image of our city, we're going to go to Edit, Paste, or Control V. This will paste the image down. Now bring your layers up and go to the layer with your city and name it City, just to keep it organized. Next, you're going to go back to Google and find the next image in your set. I'm going to copy the grass and paste it into Photoshop and then name that layer as well. And just keeping it simple, I name this grass. Go through and do this with every single one of your images and then you're ready for the next step. Number three, add grass and cracks to the street. So we have this really nice street, but I wanna add cracks. So make your cracks layer visible and then change the blending mode to multiply. This will make it see through and a lot easier to work with. We need to make sure that this actually fits into our street. So we zoom out, then we're gonna go up to edit, transform, and select distort. Since we zoomed out, we can take all of the corners of our image and now we can distort them. We can bring them out and try to match the perspective of the street. Now you may notice in my example, if I go too far, the entire picture suddenly shows. It'll happen here in just a sec, right there and there. So if it ever goes too far inside, it can't transform that way. So you have to make sure that your corners match up correctly, that they are actually having corners that bow outward instead of inward. Otherwise, the graphics don't make sense and Photoshop doesn't like that. Now we have cracks that match the perspective of our street. And we're gonna do the same thing with the grass that we copied. Now, make sure that you get it so the grass matches or takes up as much area as the cracks and we need to make sure we can see through it. So use a blending mode that works best for your image. This may be very different between my example and yours because we're dealing with different images. So in my case, I chose to use linear light and that gave me this appearance. It may be different for you, 
But once you've chosen one, you simply do the same steps. Go to Edit, Transform, and Distort. And this will give you the same transforming options as we did with the cracks. This basically makes your grass look as if it is correctly positioned, as well as using the same properties and perspective as your cracks. But we still have a lot that's going over the edge. So we're going to add a mask, get a black soft round brush. And now if I paint over the edges with this soft round brush, I can start to hide out pieces that I don't want. Maybe parts that are going on the sidewalk or other parts of the grass that just look like they're floating in the air. Once you've gone through and erased that all out, you're ready for the next step. Number four, add rust texture to the buildings. Now, this is a little different because we're gonna reuse this layer. So I'm going to duplicate it. I can drag this down to the plus icon and it makes a copy. So I'll hide the original. And with this copy, I can now do the same steps that I've done previously for the cracks and the grass. Now I wanna be able to see through it. So I'm going to use a blending mode. In this case, I'll use overlay. And once it's in position, I go to edit, transform, distort. And this allows me to distort it along the same perspective and plane as the buildings. I'm only going to focus on doing the left side for now. But once that's in position, I can simply hit enter and I'm done. Now with the original rust, I'm going to do the same thing. I will blend it, transform and distort. Now I can do the same thing, but on the right side. Once you've done all of this, You'll start to notice that the textures perspective lines up and looks much better. Um, if it looks pixelated, make sure that you have a high res image of rust. Number five, add overgrowth. Now we're going to take the pictures that we got for our overgrown moss, the tree trunks and vines and all of the tree tops and all of that stuff. And we're going to take the layers and manipulate them accordingly. I'm going to use a mask to get rid of everything that I don't want around the edges. Once that's finished, you can duplicate the layer as many times as you like and reuse it throughout the picture. Just make sure that you don't have anything popping out that you don't want. So I use this same picture of the overgrown vines and moss and I use the transform distort technique that we've already gone over and blending to put it in several places at the same time. Next. I use the same technique. I go and create a mask for the overgrown tree roots here. And I begin to erase and clear out all of the edges with that brush. Next, I transform and place this where I would like it to go. You can also use the distort function to add any perspective that you would like and go in a little bit closer to mask it however you would like. Then we can go in and adjust it just in case like if you have trees or plants that look brighter than the rest of the picture you can adjust the brightness but it will change everything so make sure that you anchor that adjustment layer to the layer just underneath it by holding alt and clicking if you haven't seen this i have it on previous videos as well i will also add an adjustment layer for hue and saturation i wanted to make sure that the tree was the same warm color as the rest of the walls once that's finished I'm moving straight on to my treetops. And we use the same technique here. We mask out the top and any of the background parts that we don't want. Once that's all finished, you can actually start chopping up different parts of this picture and you can add them in throughout the image as you would like. In my case, I took just a small chunk and distorted it to have it in the background. Repeat this process until you have all the overgrowth just the way you want it. Number five, grass and leaf brushing. So if you have Photoshop CC, make sure that you have your legacy brushes active and under legacy brushes, you'll have default brushes. If we scroll down on the default brushes, you will eventually find dune grass and scattered maple leaves. I'm gonna use the dune grass for this next step. Make sure to click that. And then we have to select a color. 
You can color pick from the grass you already have, or you can choose how you would like from the color picker. But notice, as I begin to draw grass, it looks like it has white and green. That's because it's using the green and white background colors there. So I have to choose a different color instead of white. So I'll go with a lighter green. Now, we have a good mixture of dark and light green. Adjust this as needed until you have a color that you like. Now, make sure that if you have grass that's far away, you shrink your brush down so that you can have smaller bristles and smaller grass coming out of the cracks as you go along. But as you get closer to the foreground, you wanna make sure that your brush increases in size so that it looks like the perspective is still matching. Next, you can click on Scattered Maple Leaves, and the same color principles apply. However, if we start painting, it's huge. So you need to choose the colors that you would like to go with, then shrink your brush a lot. This way, it starts to look like vines or moss. So you can now draw up and around certain corners and nooks and crannies on all the different walls, and you can add vines as you would like. And this is the final product. This is basically the quick way to make a city look abandoned. However, I do have one additional thing for you guys. Bonus, add a new sky. So, use the building edges and a lasso tool. I would suggest using the polygonal lasso tool. Um, and again, you don't have to go over every single detail. I was kind of in a rush, so I just went through all sorts of ledges. But once you mask out that sky, you can search for a new one, copy it, and then paste it. Make sure it's on the bottom. And you may notice that some of the rust is still there, so you gotta mask that away. Get rid of that stuff. Then you can add an adjustment layer and make the sky more vibrant. Now if you look at where we started versus where our picture went, you'll see that the difference is pretty staggering. Now this was a very quick version. Um, if you were to take a few hours on this, you could really get into some detail. That's the end of this tutorial. If you really like what you saw, guys, please make sure to hit that like button. It helps the channel. If you have ideas for new tutorials, please don't be shy. Send me a comment or you could shoot me an email at technicallysomething.contact at gmail.com. And... I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. This is Kevin Allen, and this was technically something. Have a great day.